So now we've been able to understand dealing with one server. All of this, we've been kind of dealing with one server. But you see, in life, life is not a straight line. Life is never a straight line. Sometimes management want to use a lot of approaches to reduce waiting time. Sometimes the waiting time is too much. You are waiting 16 minutes to be said, come on, that's too, that's too much. So management would want to use methodologies to deal with the situation. One way is by adding an employee. So you don't have one server, you bring another server to come and help. Now, this is going to affect the service rate. The meal will be affected because one employee has been added. So the service rate will be affected. Now, the second option is not to do that. Sometimes the other means of doing this is go beyond that service rate and add a new checkout counter machine. Now, suppose these are you know, serving, the machine can serve like a human being. Okay? Adding a machine, which is not an employee, can, will affect the arrival rate. Now, why? Why will it affect the arrival rate? And this is why. Because majority of people who will be arriving will no longer go into the usual arrival section. They will go to the back of their building to where the machine is to go and collect their money or collect whatever they want to collect or be served by the machine. So the arrival rate will be cut down. So if you use the machine, the arrival rate will be affected. But if you use the human being, the service rate will be affected. Now, in either case, you've got to recompute the whole thing again. You've got to recompute the waiting time. That's why I told you that the WK is very important. Okay. So you're, you're going to now recompute the waiting time. It's not only the waiting time you're going to cut. So remember, you're going to look at a situation where you recompute the waiting time. And when you recompute the waiting time, now, of course, the reason why management would have done this is to save time. So you have to compute something for the time saved. The time saved. And then, of course, any time you save time, you will save money. You will gain some money. So monetary gain. You find out. Okay, monetary gain. And then, of course, there will be some costs associated with the machine or with that new employee, whether it's salary or machine maintenance costs or depreciation or anything. And so you've got to deduct all of these potential costs from the monetary gain so that you are going to get what? Net gain. Okay. And then you can now compare the two. Okay, If I were to use the employee, what is that going to do for me? How much net gain will I get? If I was to use the, the employee or the machine, you know, how much is that going to cost me? And what is the money saved? And you can now juxtapose each other with each other and then be able to find out the solution. So let's take a typical scenario of a situation and then deal with it in that particular manner. Let's take a real life situation. Okay, real life. ShopRite. ShopRite is a busy center for residents in East Lebanon and the environment, the area, the surroundings. Assume that two customers arrive every minute and three customers are served every 50 minutes. Two customers arrive every 12 minutes. Three customers are served every 15 minutes. And that currently, there is only one cashier. Let's deal with that first. What is the average waiting time in minutes before service begins? What is average waiting time? So let's quickly work on that. So keep your numbers here. Two customers arrive every 12 minutes. So let's write that. Okay, let's write that. Okay. So you have two customers every 12 minutes. And then we are told that you have three customers served. So this is arrival, two customers arrive. Three customers served. 
Three customers are served every 15 minutes. So because they are all in minutes, we can proceed whatever we want to proceed. There's of course only one cashier. The question was, what is the average waiting time in minutes before service begins? What is the average waiting time in minutes? Now that word, average waiting time, you and I both know that the average waiting time is simply talking about what formula? You can remind us, okay? Average waiting time, what formula is that? What formula? The formula that gives it which letter? You can tell us. It's not a W. It's not a W, but it's what? It's not a W. The average waiting time is not W, it's WQ. It's WQ. Okay. So that is what you are being asked to find, to find the WQ. So, but you see, in this very instance, it would be nice to send everybody to hours first. That's it. Send everybody to hours and then work it out. So we got to convert the two customers arrive every two minutes. So we got to put it all in an hour. Okay. So if two customers are arriving every two minutes, it means that our lambda is going to be how many customers are arriving 60 minutes? Two is 12 minutes. How many is 60? Okay. So how many is 60? It will be 60 times two divided by 12. 60 times two divided by 12, isn't it? That is, that is going to give you the lambda, the arrival rate, okay? That's gonna give you the arrival rate. What did you get? If you do that. That's 10 customers per hour, exactly. So you are gonna get 10 customers per hour. Now let's look at the mu. That one too, we're gonna to convert it into that. Okay, three customers are served every 15 minutes. So how many customers are served in 60 minutes? It will be 60 times three divided by 15. That'll give you how many? Somebody has already written the answers in a joyful way, 12 customers per hour. So that is the first part we are going to use to answer the first question. So the question says, what, what is the average waiting time? Now, so now we can calculate our average waiting time, WQ, or queuing time. Is it a waiting time or queuing time? Remember, this waiting time or queuing time is given by lambda over mu into bracket mu minus lambda. This is the average waiting time. Lambda is given as what? 10. So you're gonna have 10 over 12 into bracket 12 minus 10. And when you do that very nicely, what do you get? I thought somebody has already done it. Come on, you guys are smart. I thought you would have gotten it. So let's, <laughs> let's get 0.4167 hours. 0.4167 hours. That's our average. 0.4167 hours. Now let's convert it into minutes. 25 minutes. Somebody will say 25.2 minutes. Is it 25 minutes or 25.2 minutes? I want to keep it as a test, 25.2 minutes. Okay. But sometimes you, you gotta be real. I don't know how you did your calculation. If you use decimals, yes. If you don't use decimals, then fine. So, so if you use decimals, then you are right. If you use decimals, you're not going to get 25 points. You see, I'm using decimals. 
But if you are using this one here, then you get 12 minus 10. That is two, two times 12. That is what, 24. So you're gonna get 10 over 24, okay? So 10 over 24, two goes here, five, two goes here, 12. So if you multiply this one by 60, okay? If you multiply that by 60, see, sometimes it's the way your decimals work. If you do five times 60 divided by 12, that will give you exactly 25 in minutes. So if you use decimals, you're gonna get 25.5. Okay. Don't worry, in an exam situation, there are leeways, but I would suggest that I always try and cancel it first. So you will get 25 minutes. Okay, so keep that in mind, okay. 25 minutes. Now let's go to the question now. Okay. Let's go to the question. Um, the question says, ShopRite is a busy center, very busy center. And then we are told all of this scenario. The next part of the question says, and I'm reading it from here. It says that find the proportion of time that a customer has to wait. We are back again with that same question. Find the proportion of time that a customer has to wait. Proportion means percentage. The time a customer has to wait. If a customer has to wait, it means the server is what being utilized. So you are being asked to find the utilization factor. What is the formula for the utilization factor? Or you remember it, you know it. Okay. Utilization factor is given by lambda over mu. Now, what is our lambda? Well, you come back here. This was our lambda at the top here, 10. What was our mu? Our mu was at the top here, 12. So you're talking about 10 over 12. Okay, let me just move to the next page. 10 over 12. What would be your answer? 10 divided by 12. Now, most of the time, um, most of the time when you get some of these things, you just don't be perturbed at all. You just go by the system. So 10 by 12. And then you can find the answer in point eight three 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 three. Or you can put it in percentage the way you want. Okay, that's easy. That's very easy. So we don't want to bore much of ourselves. Now I want to go back to the entire storyline because the, the, the key point is what we are coming to. There's a key point. The key point is that Management perceives that a waiting time computed in A, and we remember the waiting time, 25 minutes. That was not acceptable, and it's faced with two options. Management got to reduce that waiting time. It's too much. Why do people have to wait 25 minutes to be served? That's not good. So management have a choice. They can either employ an assistant, for the cashier. So they will employ a human being or open a second machine, cash machine. Now, this is where it gets interesting. You have to calculate both at the same time. Now, the former, that is assistant, if implemented, will enable for requests to be served. So now he's giving you another new kind of service rate for that. Every Now, remember, the human being, we said that the human being if a new human being is added, it will affect the service rate. And that's what you are seeing here. Okay. The former will enable for requests to be served every 15 minutes, and the assistant will receive a monthly salary of 160 Ghana cities. And the latter, if applied, will improve the arrival rate, not a service rate, to one customer every two, 12 minutes. Okay. Now, however, it requires an initial capital outlay. That's the second one. 
The second one requires an initial capital outlay of 3,000 CDs, and the cashier who man that machine will receive a monthly salary of 250 CDs. Now, the shop owner always avoids a loss in sales of 80 CDs per month for each minute that average customer waiting time is reduced. So watch it. So whether you use the employee approach or the machine approach, each time you use any approach, what's going to happen is that the, cost, the shop owner is going to save some money of 80 Ghana cities per month, every minute, every minute. Okay. So every minute he's saving 80 Ghana cities. Now calculate the financial gain to the shop right under option one and advise management on this. So that is option one. Of course, you have to do the same thing for option two and also advise management on that. So let's take it one by one, one by one. So the first thing is this. The first thing is the, the, the employee has been added. A new employee has been added here. But let me just go back to that. So a new employee has been added and this new employee is going to change the service rate. At least that's all no. You know that anytime you bring a new person, that new person will change the service rate. So let's, let's look at the previous waiting time. And then we compare it now, but what was our previous waiting time? Okay. So the previous, and this is how you got to do it. Previous waiting time. Do you remember it was 25? It was 25. Now in the book, you might see that I use a 25.2, but no problem. Okay. You use the same principle. So the previous waiting time was 25. So keep that in mind. Now we are going to calculate the current waiting time. We're going to calculate the current waiting time. Now, how do you calculate the current waiting time? We are told that we should find a new service rate for requests to be served. Okay, that's all we're told. Okay, let me take you back to this slide here. So under the option one here, we find a new, new, the new service rate. Okay. We are told that four requests are to be served every five minutes. So if you have four requests to be served every 15 minutes, how many requests are served in an hour? Four requests every 15 minutes. How many requests in an hour? Okay, it will be 15 times four. Okay, or in 60 minutes. Okay, so four is to 15. How many is to be 60? So 60 times four divided by 50. 60 times four divided by 15. What do you get? You get 16 customers. In fact, you should know that if I multiply the 15 by four times, I'll get 60, one hour. So I'll multiply the four by four times and I'll get 16 customers. So remember, the mu has changed here, but then the lambda will remain the same. The lambda will remain the same. What was our lambda? Let's go back to our situation here. Okay. So lambda was 10. Lambda will still remain, but mu has moved from 12 to 16. So you have increased the service rate. So if you are increasing service rate, it means that you are now serving faster. So service is increasing. So obviously, it's going to reduce the time. And that's what we're going to calculate. So it means that our now waiting time is going to be the lambda over mu into bracket mu minus lambda. Okay. So that is going to be the lambda, which hasn't changed, is still 10, divided by the mu, which has now changed. Okay. The mu before was 12. Okay. The mu before was 12. The mu, let me say before, zero. The mu one is now 16. So it's going to be 16 into bracket 16 minus the 10. And when you calculate that, so if you do 16 minus 10, that's four. Okay. That's 64. 10 divided by 
64, okay? Um, and then you multiply that by 60, that'll give you six. So that is going to give you six minutes. Check. Okay, that'll give you six minutes. If you, if you convert it into minutes. Did you get that? If you check it, you know. If you check it, you know. Because this is going to give you, um, if, if you use a cancellation, it's going to give you six minutes. I'm positive about it. So remember, the waiting time before was 25. Do you remember? It was 25. And now, greatly enough, you've been able to reduce this 25 all the way to six minutes in the new approach of what? Having an employee. So with having an employee, we now have six minutes. Now, normally I would do a table here and the table there and I'll be calculating for both. But let's do this one first. So now keep that six minutes in mind. Okay. So now what is going to be our time saved? So we need a new page and then we now find the time saved. So you write something like time saved. The time saved is going to be the previous waiting time. The previous waiting time or the queuing time minus the current queuing time. The previous queuing time is 25. The current queuing time is six. So the time saved is what? So this is where you become so happy. Is it 19? Yeah. So you get 19 minutes of time saved. 19 minutes. So we've been able to save 19 minutes. Now, I wanted to go back to the question. And you remember something he said about any time we, 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 we save time. Do you remember any time we save time, exactly what happens? And I'm just going to take us back to the storyline. There you go. So, yeah. I just wanted to see that for yourself says that management perceived that the waiting time is too unacceptable. I have an assistant, the former implemented for request to be served in every 15 minutes. And, and this is a point, and the assistant will receive a monthly salary. That is a new employed assistant will receive a monthly salary of 160 Ghana cities. Keep that in mind. So that's a cost to the company. Once it's to Ghana says. Okay. Now moving on, it says that the shop owner, this is where my interest is, the shop owner avoids a loss in sales of 80 Ghana cities every month for each minute, each minute that an average customer waiting time is reduced. So each minute that you reduce an average customer waiting time, you are going to get what? 80 Ghana cities for each minute. Now, how many minutes have we reduced the waiting time? 19 minutes. So how much monetary gain are we going to have? Are you now getting the picture? So you now calculate the monetary gain. You got to calculate your monetary gain. And the monetary gain is going to be the time saved multiplied by the number of minutes um, money that you get for each time. So the monetary gain is going to be the time save, which is 19 times the 80 Ghana cities, the amount you get for every minute, okay, 80 Ghana cities. So that is how much, how much money you get. What is that? Please do the computation for me. Okay. So you get 19 times 80, 15, 20. Yeah. 
1520 Ghana cities. So this is the monetary gain. Is that not beautiful? Isn't it great that we always try to reduce time? You know? So you got 1520. And that is a remarkable achievement. But of course, that is not the net gain because there was, this was at a certain cost. What was the salary of the assistant, if you can remember? Okay. The monetary loss, let's call it that way. Monetary loss. That was 160 Ghana cities. You can remember, it was 160 Ghana cities. So you have to take that 160 Ghana cities from the 1520. And when you do that, you are going to get what? So that the next thing we are going to have is going to be our net gain. Under option one, the net gain or the net earnings. The net earnings is going to be the gain minus the loss. So 1520 minus 160. And that is going to give us 1360. Some of you have already gotten that before I was born. But I was born, somebody was already calculating that. So under this option one, we are going to save an income of that. Now, the question is, would you recommend this? Would you recommend that management implement option one? Yes. So you have to make a statement. Now, why? Because it's positive, that's it. Okay. Option one is recommended because, because of a positive you know, gain. Because of a positive gain. So, so in this case, we are talking about option one on its own without comparing it with option two. Okay, we're gonna do option two on its own without comparing to option one, then finally we compare. So this is how we compute the two scenarios. The first one, option. Now let's go to the second scenario. The second scenario. And in the second scenario, I'll take you back to the entire storyline. Okay. Because when I take you back to the entire storyline, you get a, a bigger picture. Oops. Okay, so let me just show you here. It says that management perceives that the waiting time computed in A is not acceptable, blah, 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 blah. Okay, and then it says the latter, if implemented, okay, so, so there was two options. The former, if implemented, that's what we did. The salary will be 160, remember that? Okay, so that was a former. Now, the latter, the latter, if implemented, will improve the arrival rate to one customer every 12 minutes. One customer every 12 minutes. Now remember the arrival rate, the original arrival rate, I just want to show you so that you don't forget. The original arrival rate, it comes from here. It was 10. Okay. Now, the original service rate will remain 12. But now the arrival rate has changed, okay? So keep that in mind. I just want to write the arrival rate. So the arrival rate zero was 10 customers per hour. Don't forget that. Now, with this one, you and I are told that it will change the latter, that's the second option will improve the arrival rate to one customers every 12 minutes. So one customer is every 12 minutes. How many customers every 60 minutes? It will be 60 divided by 12, okay? One customer every 12 minutes. How many customers every 60 minutes? It will be 60 divided by 12. So the uh, option two here, Okay. It's going to be 60 divided by 12. 
And if you have that 60 divided by 12, there's no question that you know how much is going to get. Those are going to be five customers, right? Okay, so you're going to get five customers. So you get five customers every hour now. So this is a new situation. Now remember, the service rate hasn't changed. It still remains at 12. So the original service rate is still remaining at 12 customers. So on the basis of that, we can now calculate our waiting time. So our waiting time, as always, okay, and this is for option two, is going to be the lambda over mu into bracket mu minus lambda. Okay. Lambda is now what? Five over mu hasn't changed, so it's 12 into bracket 12 minus five. And when you do that nicely, you are going to get a certain number of minutes. Now you can do the division as well. 12 minus five is seven. Okay. Seven times 12 is 84. Okay. So you have five divided by 84. And that will give you 0 0.0595. And I'll give you point zero five nine five zero five nine five, which is approximately correct to two decimal places. I'm going to get something like point zero six hours, but we want to convert it into minutes. Point zero six hours. Let's multiply it by sixty minutes. So point point zero six times sixty get 3.6 minutes. So this is going to give you 3.6 minutes. Now remember, the original Q was 25. In case you've forgotten, it was 25. Okay. And now this one has given us what? This one has given us this cool, interesting. So let's look at the time saved. The time saved in this second scenario, it's going to be the previous time of 25 minus the current time of 3.6. Previous time of 25 minus the current time of 3.6. What do you get? You get 21.6. So you now have 21.6 minutes. But don't forget the story we always have, that a shop owner avoids a loss. Do you remember that sentence? The shop owner always avoids a loss any time. Somebody says he got 21.4, 21.0. Don't worry, there's always a time lag. There's always a time. Oh, sorry, 21.4, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, 21.4. I'm using a previous answer, thank you. So you get 21.4. The shop owner avoids a loss in sales of 80 Ghana cities per every minute. Okay. So on the basis of that, we should be able to find the monetary gain. So the monetary gain in this contest is going to be the 21.4 times 80. 21.4 times 80, what do you get? Somebody should be calculating very fast and be working beautifully with me. Okay, 1712, is that correct? 1712 Ghana cities. 1712 Ghana cities. All right, so that is a amount, but there was a statement that was given. And I want to just take you back to the statement because he made a very interesting statement about the capital outlay. Okay, let me just take you back to the story. Always you go back. He says, however, okay, this was a question. However, oops, it requires an initial capital outlay of 3,000 Ghana cities. We'll come back to that initial capital outlay, and the cashier who will man the machine 
will receive a monthly salary. So that cashier will get a monthly salary of 250. So let's, let's incorporate that, the salary of 250. A monthly salary of 250, how do you incorporate that? So you remember when we had the monetary loss? So this is gonna be the monetary loss here, monetary loss. And that monetary loss was 250. So the net gain or the net earning is going to be the 1712 minus 250. The 1712 minus 250, that gives you what? 1462. 1462 Ghana cities. So you've been able to get those beautiful answers. And I can see somebody working beautifully with me. So you have 1462 Ghana cities for that incredible monetary earnings, okay, eventual monetary earnings. So option one on its own, can we recommend it? Option one on its own. Can we recommend it? Absolutely. Okay. Recommend it. Recommend because we got a positive net gain. Recommended option two on its own. Now, keep that in mind. So because we have a positive gain, we now recommend it. Now, let's go back to the storyline. Okay. So, We've been able to work out everything. This is what is left in the storyline. Now, everything we've worked is what we were asked. Let me just take you back here. Then you know, okay. The question was calculate the financial gain to shop right under option two. But you see, there was a clause that it says, assuming the initial capital outlay is sunk cost and advice management of this option. So what we calculated, we got an amount, which was, what was the amount? We had 14, 17 something, okay, 1,700 something. So we got an amount. We did not take into consideration the initial capital outlay of 3,000. That was here. There was an initial capital outlay of 3,000 for the second option. Why didn't we? Because we're told that the initial capital outlay is a sunk cost. What is a sunk cost? A sunk cost is that kind of a cost which is not recoverable, okay? It is a cost that has already been born and it is unrecoverable. So you cannot capture that cost here into your analysis, it's, it's unrecoverable. And that is the essence of that question. So that is why we did not consider the 3,000 that we use. So our advice to management in the context of it, because it's honestly, if you should have considered this sunk cost, if you should have considered this initial capital outlay, which is 3,000, then this value is going to be negative. Okay, it's going to be negative. However, we are told to consider it. It could have been a gift from somebody you don't even consider. And so we did not capture that into the cost. Okay, so now let's go to the D part, the final part. Okay. The final part. Assuming the initial capital outlay is sunk cost, which would you recommend to management? Which option? Now, assuming the initial capital outlay is a sunk cost, which one would you have recommended? Option one or option two? This one is obvious. Let me take you back, okay? Let me take you back to look at some of them. Option two gave us an amount of 14, let me just highlight it. 1462 Ghana cities, option two. Okay. Option one gave us an amount of 13, 13, or 1,360. So if the initial capital outlay is sunk cost, if it is sunk cost, okay, then it means that between option one and two, you can see that option two gave us more net gain. So between the two, we would have taken it. However, the question is saying that, assuming the initial capital 
uh, is sunk, which option would you recommend? So on the basis of this, if it is still sunk, we will not go with option two because option two gave us 13,000, sorry, 1,360. Whereas option, option one gave us 1,360 and option two gave us 1,462. So if the initial capital outlay is sunk, we'll go for option two. So option two will be the real deal in that question. This one, you have to write it in English, okay? That is what that question is actually. Let me take you back to the question. So that is what is is not is a question where you have to just think. You have to just think. You recommend option two because option two is more than option three. Okay. Now question, and this is tricky. Is the last one. It says after how many months would the management be indifferent between the two options? I want this question to sink in. After how many months would the management be indifferent between option one and option two? Now we're gonna solve that with a certain knowledge, certain kind of knowledge, okay? So after how many months, after how many months, would management be indifferent between the two options? After how many months? Now, this is where you must consider the initial capital outlay, the startup cost of 3,000 for option two, okay? So you want to take note of that, okay? So here, consider, For option two, the 3,000 Ghana cities starter. And the reason why we got to consider this is because we are looking at how long it takes. So it wasn't something we're to get it now, but now we are considering it. And for them to be indifferent, listen carefully, please. For them to be indifferent, what it means is that whatever amount we had in both must be equated, but for the second option, the initial capital outlay must be captured. So let's say that we want to know how many months, technically we want to know how many months. All you have to do is to know how much you are getting from the first option, 1360. Okay. So the first option is 13, let me use a different, to begin to appreciate. You got 1360 Ghana cities. But how many months? Let's represent the number of months by X. And this should be equal to the second option because it does the word indifferent. Indifferent here means that there's equality. Okay? They are, you are indifferent between the two means that the amount between this one and this one, you are, you are indifferent. And the second amount is 1462. So this one is 1462. But I also want to know how many months are attacked. So this is the time where looking at this, I'll be indifferent. I need to find X. But before I find X, I must remember that the second option, there was a 3,000 initial capital outlay. That must now be incorporated. Incorporated because we are looking at how many months. Okay. So you need to subtract 3,000 from the second option, which is the one on your right. On the basis of this, and remember, X is the number of months it's going to take. You don't know that you'll be indifferent, that, that the two will be equal. Now, on the basis of this, you can find the number of months it's going to take. And one way is you can move this one to this side, and then bring this one to that side. Okay. So that you have 3,000 equal to 1,462 X minus 1360x. So do the calculation and let's see. Okay, so you got 1462 minus 1360. I'll give you 102. So go 102x 
equal to 3,000. So that means that you are talking about 3,000 divided by 102. And that will be X will be 29.41, 29.41 months. Of course, if it was negative, you still have to take the absolute value, okay? 29.41 months. So this means that, and this is important. This means that it would take 29.41 months to recoup the initial capital cost, the initial cost. Okay? And that would be the time when the two of them would be what? You'd be indifferent between the two. That would be the time you would be indifferent between the two. So for how many months will it take for you to be indifferent it is when, by the time you have recouped the initial capital cost, okay, and that time will take 29.41 months. Ladies and gentlemen, that is how you got to execute some of these computations. Okay. That is how you got to look at it. That is how you got to appreciate. Let me take you to the whole storyline. Okay. And you can see the same thing here 29.41 months it will take to recoup the initial capital outlay. Now, sometimes, I'm concluding here, sometimes more is saved. You see, in this case, you can see that the, when you took the machine, that one gave us more than when we took the employee. Okay, but sometimes you rather save more from hiring the employee rather than adding the machine. So as a manager, both alternatives are preferred to the original. If the manager want both to be preferred to the original, original timing. Because the original timing was 25. This one, the timing went down to six minutes. Then later, the other one, the timing went down to 3.6 minutes. So in both cases, they are good. Okay. In both cases, they are good. In practice, though, it is hard to choose between the two alternatives. Okay. The one giving you six minutes, the one giving you 3.6. Other factors will have to be captured. For example, idle time. Okay. There were some times when some workers are not working, loss of space and so many things. You know, people are talking, they are not working and all that. You got to capture all of this before anything can happen. But what you should know is that queuing theory is powerful. Queuing model helps us to decide. It doesn't decide for us. So it will give you the, is a tool you need. When you have a car, a car is a tool. If you don't drive the car well, it will have an accident. The same thing, queuing model is a tool, a methodology you gotta use. And you have to use it well, and then you'll be able to achieve anything you want to achieve. It, it helps us to descend the cost trade-offs associated with improved service. Ladies and gentlemen, I have some assignments here. You can look at it for yourself and then go through it and calculate some of the interesting things that are related to this. There are quite a number of assignments that you can check and then go through. Okay. That brings us to the end of the entire Kabuto. What a day it has been.